this tray dress I made together with another a, a maker a friend of mine who's a designer actually and my cowbell and it was quite interesting but still, I couldn't get yeah that happens so that will become one of yours uh, so that when a thing one of those bells drops if you and you can have good luck my name is Linda Persson and I'm a Swedish artist based in London at the moment. I first came to London in 99 when I got into Chelsea College of Art when it was still down at Manresa Road. And, um, I was there for three years and then I started working a little bit for other artists and did my MA in Winchester, Southampton University, working with sound and sculpture. And then sort of been staying on until 2008 really. And then that's when I started going back and forth much more. Here it feels like people have a good sort of active DIY practice both in sort of curatorial and making and people sort of create scenes for themselves which I don't think is as common in Sweden because also the support structure for artists in Sweden is different there's much more of a ground system and so people have a little bit more of a cushy environment so they don't have to sort of be out there as much. So my practice is quite um, varied. People often say it's sort of very sort of dispersed. I don't think it's dispersed. I just use a lot of different sort of materials and methods to sort of do the work necessary for the whatever I'm involved in. I mean, I'm trained as a sculptor, so I've always been interested in material and the way that something forms from one thing to another. Clay has some, is something that has been very active in my practice, even if I haven't made stuff from it. I'm interested in uh, ideas of chance uh, as well as, which is very much, in my opinion, connected to also the development of technology uh, and its direct connection to landscape. So that's something that has constantly been in my practice in different various forms and through culture and through myths and uh, through materials. And I guess it's more recently when I have actually been very much going to particular landscapes like in the very north part of Scandinavia, working a lot with Sami cultures who are also very much exposed to mining and fracking and so on in those sort of desolated areas. So I have been going to those places and collecting a lot of the oral myths that comes with those cultures. So they are not written down, which means that there's also this sort of big gap in history that I'm also interested in. Indigenous peoples' cultures is also something that is becoming more and more protected for the right reasons as well, but it's very, very heavily connected to the progression of everything that we use on a daily basis, like computers, mobile phones, uh, yeah, anything um, that we don't even... Things that we see as immat immaterial stuff, in a way, but actually it's very, very connected to the landscape and the trauma of landscape. Deep down into the dark. Last year I was in Australia, out in the place uh, in the New South Wales district, which was a, a place called Lightning Ridge, and that was combined with a sort of residency. And again, I sort of was interested in that spot because according to Aboriginal sort of legends, it was restricted in a sense that it was cursed. Uh, or they'd had this sort of idea that the rainbow serpent, which is very active in their, in their myths, was going through there. So you didn't really stay there, you just passed through. But this landscape is also uh, a very, I mean, it's silica clay everywhere, so it's completely white. 
So it's really blinding when you go out there and then the black opals only forms there. It has this sort of amazing colors, which, which is basically rainbow. So if you have lights coming through it, it would just glow. It's very strange that you see this whole landscape just getting completely dug up for the reason of just value of something that the Aboriginals didn't see as any particular value. I wanted to sort of find a stone and the way that, you know, they could be looked at as have some sort of movement and also some life in them. And the sort of the possibility of looking at them and seeing time, you know, through geological movement, even though thinking about that, we know that geological movement is so slow that we can't see it. But I kind of wanted to have those gems and see whether I can actually build a projector. So that's what I've been sort of attempting to do. <laughs> but knowing also that they are very fragile, it has to be cold light, so it has to use LED lights. So yeah, I'm sort of trying to work, work that one out. It's nice to see connections between things. So, you know, between different sort of practices that it's easy to be, it's like being part of something, but also Although I have a website, I find it really tedious and boring to do it. So it's nice to have a place where you can just upload things and it's quite straightforward and you don't have to think about design or, you know, stuff like that. And I really like the new, the way, the way that the new website looks as well.